Hello, welcome to the uh, devotion for March 27th, Monday. And this week, we're talking about God, why the big picture. Looking at what God wants to do uniquely through our church. And what that is, uh, and what our vision is, is that people who are broken or wounded or hurt or struggling will find a place that they can explore the claims of Christ at their own pace, that they can move through this process. And one of the things that I want to start by doing is looking at a couple of the lives that Jesus touched, the people that were so far outside of the, uh, the, the community of faith that nobody gave them a prayer, and yet the love of God, being able to reach out and extend into their life was radical life change. Now, one of the stories that we've heard from, uh, ki from being kids, if we've been in the church, might have even heard about it if we were outside of the church because this guy gets a little bit of press, mainly for all the wrong reasons, because he's short. But I want to read the story of Zacchaeus, and then I want us to think about it for just a minute. Here's the story. It says, Teach it, uh, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, and a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. And he was a chief tax collector. I guess if you're hated as a tax collector, being the chief tax collector puts you in a whole new realm. He, and he was wealthy. Now he wanted to see what, who Jesus was. But being sh a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him. Now, since Jesus was coming that way, now, Jesus reached the spot, and he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once, and he welcomed him gladly. But all the people saw this and began to mutter, He is going to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today, Salvation has come to his house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Now I want you to picture for just a second this scene in your mind. Here's this guy. He's traded everything that, uh, that most of us value, relationships probably, uh, honor, integrity, everything. As I said earlier today, most tax collectors have basically said, I'm not liked that much anyway. I might as well be rich and not liked. And sure enough, this guy had done it. I don't know how you get to be a chief tax collector, but whatever thing you have to do to get to that lofty position, he'd done them all. And he was wealthy. Noted. This guy was loaded. And yet, he was empty. You know, so many times we judge people by uh, all the wrong things. In the church, it seems crazy easy to load up in a van and go down to the poorest part of Mexico or even the poorest part of Nashville and to minister to people because we see such great need. It's a little harder to pull into the richest section of Hendersonville, to pull into the plantation or someplace like that and to walk up to an over a million dollar home passing two Mercedes Benz on the way in there and go, I, I want to tell you about the love of God. Most of us would be intimidated. Most of us wouldn't go rushing up to that door going, wow, this person really needs love. This person needs to know the presence and the power of God. No, most of us, if we're not feeling covetous and jealous about all of the uh, wealth that's around them and thinking to ourselves they shouldn't be uh, grumpy or hurting about anything, they've got everything their heart could desire. But this man was empty. This man was hurting. This man had made it past the point that he even cared about money anymore because he was willing to give it all away for something more precious. For feeling like somebody actually loved him and cared. 
You know, it's amazing how many people I have found over the course of my ministry that they looked like they had it all together on the outside, but when you got to know them, there was a great big hole. There was an emptiness in their life, and they were longing for something that money couldn't buy. They wanted to know the compromises that they had made, that the mistakes that they had made, that the relationships that they had sacrificed, that everything around their life didn't mean a whole lot compared to the fact that they really wanted authentic, genuine love from someone. It's crazy. Jesus finally just, because he knew this guy's heart, and he sees him up in the tree, calls him by name, and says, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Out of this massive crowd, you're the one I want to do life with. Now the thing is, from Jesus' point of view, from his vantage, do you think Zacchaeus was just like the, the greatest guy, the life of the party? I mean, you know, he was kind of the, the glory star, and Jesus thought, man, if I hang out with this guy, I mean, you know, that this is the guy. Or do you think maybe just Jesus knew that he was probably the most needy and also the one that could make the most radical change if he just understood the love of God? I tend to believe that it's the latter. I tend to think that, that Jesus knew his heart and he knew his loneliness. and He wanted to break through all of that, break through that rich, confident exterior, get down to the place to where he knew this man really wanted to touch. And what was the net result? Evidently, a bunch of people who had been poor got a blessing. And a bunch of people that had been cheated got justice because of one act of love. Now, I want you to think. I want us to just give God a moment and say, God, is there someone in my life that doesn't necessarily on the obvious and on the outside look like the person that uh, is uh, desperate and needy? Someone that that may have sacrificed a whole bunch of things to try to get what they have, may have walked in some hard places, may have made some bad mistakes, may even be hard to get along with, that may not know the love of God. And would you do what Jesus did? His evangelism wasn't that hard. He just said, would you go to lunch? I'm wondering, might we ask someone a little unexpected, possibly, to just go have lunch and show them their value to God. If you need to say something about it, that'd be cool, but just by your presence, by your attentive presence, let them see that you believe that there is good and value in them. Because there's a lot of people that have sacrificed a lot of stuff to get where they are. And they may carry a real brash uh, exterior, even superior exterior. And many times it's a, it's a sham because they really feel isolated and alone. I had a buddy of mine that was at the top of one of the companies. And one of the things that he said frequently is, uh, it's lonely at the top. Well, sometimes those lonely people at the top that you have to walk past some of the opulence to get to really desperately want to know that somebody cares enough to do life with them. Jesus modeled it. So I'm just going to ask you, just pray. Is there someone in your life that you need to ask to lunch? It may be the same radical change that we saw in Zacchaeus the love of God radically changes people. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you that, uh, Lord, that you came to seek and to save those that were lost. And Father, we know that uh, being lost can happen for a whole host of reasons. It can be lost because we made a whole bunch of decisions and we've just uh, given up on ourselves. Uh, 
feel like others have given up on us. It can be because we're confused. We've got so many things going on, we're just not sure which way to go. It can be because our heart has become so hard and callous. The walls have become so steep and so tall that we can't even see over them ourselves. And Lord, every one of those individuals that have made those kind of choices, Zacchaeus was hated by every person in the crowd except for one. The one that knew the love of God and knew how to give it. And because of that, this young man's incredible life was changed. God, I want to be that kind of man. I want us to have that kind of ministry. And Father, the only thing Jesus did was just to say, would you like to have lunch? I desire to have lunch with you. Father, I ask that you would open our eyes to the small things, that person that we might show the love of God just by our attentive presence and also the willingness not to tell them, well, I only took you to lunch because I wanted you to see the love of God, but, but to share with them what's going on in your life and how you're changing. And so, Father, I just ask that, uh, that you would give us that understanding, that wisdom, that knowledge. Show us that person that we can bless. We look for you to give us that kind of wisdom, those kind of eyes, eyes that see the need and the willingness to be a little part of it. And so, Father, we just thank you in advance that you will use us in something as small as a lunch. And so we look for you to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guys, just encourage you. Open your eyes. Jesus at one point said, the fields are ripe. For harvest. The only problem is there's very few laborers. There's not a lot of people willing to be used. Man, let's make sure that's not us. Let's be willing to be used. Open our eyes. Just be open. And I believe God will show us that person that we need to interact with, offer a lunch, and then just do it. And we'll see you tomorrow. Lord bless.